Wow. I'm just... God is moving powerfully. Actually, he's doing so many good things. It's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to get in my brain. I'm trying to... Obviously, the Africa team's going to share next week, but I've been hearing Chris unloading stories about that. It's just incredible things happen, just incredible doors, uh, ministries, and so it's going to be really super awesome next week to hear the testimonies. Uh, the Africa trip... More good stuff. Our peak school is going tremendous. Lauren and Michelle are just amazing, fabulous. They're like, actually, yes, give them a hand. They, uh, it's been really fun. It's been in there, and they are made for this. They're like, they're in their element, and they're doing a fabulous job. Ray's rocking the business world out there, bringing the kingdom of heaven into business worlds. Miracles are happening. Uh, Howard, you want to come up and share your test, share a testimony? Come on. Howard, uh, you can share whatever you want. I mean, but as far as your... He, Howard's dad was a pastor for many years in Wasilla, right? You go ahead and just share with... Um, yeah, I, I actually work up in Alaska still, and uh, we love living here, and we love being at this church. But um, my dad passed away... Um, a few Saturdays ago, so I had to come home from work to uh, Wasilla. Anyway, anyway, uh, along the route of all of that, um, there's a revival going on in Alaska. There's a report of just one church in Anchorage, uh, Abbott Loop Christian Center, um, which had had experiences of revival in the past, but they brought in some uh, people to just teach them in the ways of going out and sharing their testimony in town. And the result of that is uh, within three weeks, uh, 1,900 people came to, to know Jesus. Three weeks, 1,900 people. Um, there's an ongoing revival happening. They're actually believing for all of Alaska, which is only about the size of Spokane population. 750,000 people are going to be coming to Jesus by 2017. And you can look it up online, AK One Day, and there's, a, there's actually a movement going on. It's a prayer movement. Uh, Lou Engel's involved, and a bunch of our friends are involved. We're involved. And uh, come on, Alaska. That's so awesome. That's fantastic. 1,900 people in three weeks being saved. Lord, it's Spokane. It can happen. I mean, it's just not, honestly, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. We're going to talk about it more. Uh, more good news. I don't want, I want to steal Chris Nolan's thunder, but he got this contract with the state of Washington, and he's going to be able to open his home. And so they're going to be having young men in their home, five or six of them, so that's going to happen really soon. Uh, what other good news do we have? Uh, Charlie and Carolina, they're opening their house. They've got a house open for people. Steve and Christina are just killing it out there on the street. They're doing, they're constantly ministering out on the street, doing uh, stuff. So there is so much good news out there. There's so much happening in the kingdom of heaven. Let heaven come. I mean, it's coming. It's, it's invading. It's here. It's moving powerfully. And uh, so it's, Revival is breaking out in Alaska, and it's going to easily, I know we can feel a lot of connections to Alaska, so. And it's, I mean, revival is here. Honestly, I mean, this, what we're experiencing in the services right now, in our worship, is so powerful. And as we just give ourselves to it, we just give ourselves to the Lord, just give ourselves to that worship, give ourselves to that spirit of revival, God is going to radically, radically change our, our hearts, our church, who we are as a people, and, uh, Go ahead and go to Luke chapter 10, and this all fits in really well with what I want to share this morning, and Luke chapter 10. It's a scripture we've hit before, even recently, but I want to, I think, bring out some different things. We've been talking about walking in authority. We've been talking about who we are in Christ and our role of a disciple, and even just kind of the, to me, people want, say I want revival for America, but to me that means, okay, you want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, 
And if you want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that means you don't get to control it. <laughs> you, you don't. <laughs> it's funny when I say it. <laughs> you, you, I don't know who you think you are. You don't get to control the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is it's God, in, you know, God in spirit. So you, you don't you know, I think who you think you are, but you don't get to control the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes and he does what he wants to do. And you just say, yes, sir, and just yield to it and just enjoy what God is doing in your, in your life. And so, <laughs> so you don't get to control it. And God has a structure. God has a wineskin. And I believe it's a, it's a wineskin we talked about last week, uh, the fivefold church in Ephesians chapter 4, fivefold ministry church. And it's for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service. And man, we're seeing that here. We're seeing it tremendously that happening. It's just going to get more. It's going to increase uh, tremendously. So here in Luke chapter 10, the Lord is going to send out, my translation says 72, others say 70. There's different manuscripts have a little bit different number there. And I'll say 70. Uh, sent out 70 others and sent them. That word is apost apostello in the Greek. They, he basically apostled them on ahead, two by two, into every town and every place where he himself was, good to go, was to go. So Jesus is going to go into every town, every village. He's going to re release the spreading of his kingdom. So this is basically Jesus' methodology. It's Jesus' strategy for extending the kingdom. How is the kingdom going to get extended? What's going to happen? What does Jesus do? So he points 70 people. Obviously, I'm sure they're faithful followers of him, people who have been following him. He's going to apostle them out. And he's going to spend two by two in every town and place where he himself was about to go. So to me, the fact that he was two by two, well, number, first of all, you have to say, okay, Jesus has to choose, choose you. You're all, if you follow in Christ this morning, you're chosen. Jesus is chosen. You fast, pass that first step. Secondly, you have to hear, where is he sending you? What's your field? What's your harvest field? For Ray, it's the business world. And, you know, God can use him other places too. But primarily, that's where God's moving powerfully in his life. For you, maybe in education. It may be in your home with your children. It may be, you know, in your place of work or whatever it is. There's all these different fields. And you have to, it may just be out on the street. Um, I believe that the Lord obviously is moving in our church. He's moving through people out on the street. I mean, God's doing that powerfully uh, out, out there in the street. So you have to hear the, the specific directions of the Lord for your life. And then thirdly, he's going to connect you with other people. You're going to be part of a team. You're not going to be a lone ranger because it's dangerous. You just go be, go lone ranger it yourself. You think, well, I can just do whatever I want to do and go wherever I'm going to go. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to come to Christ. You have to come into his presence. And God then begins to show you where, where your field is. Then he begins to sovereignly connect you to people who have that same burden for that same field. And it's like the, the principle, one chases a thousand, two chase ten thousand. You have that, that effect of multiplication when all of a sudden you link up with your brother and your sister and you say, hey, let's take this field. Let's take, there's great stories in the Old Testament of the guy who's defending the lentil field and the guy who's, I think it was the barley field was the other one. And they're David's, David's mighty men. And they took their sword and all the Philistines were coming against them, all the enemies coming against them. And they just stood there. One guy said he told the, the sword, he couldn't get the sword out of his hand. It just cleaved, was cleaving to his hand. So there's this intensity that I think even Christina was trying to convey to us that you see a field and you say, that's my field. And you get, you get the sword in your hand. You say, I'm coming after the, the, the powers of hell and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get possession of my field. Those are my people. Those are the people that God's called me to, to reach out to. And you begin to move with power and authority in that, that place. So you hear from the Lord. He sends you out. And this, these are the places that Jesus wants to go. So when he puts something in your heart, he's telling you, hey, you know what? I want to go there. Th this is where I want to be. And so I'm sending you ahead. I'm heading you. I'm letting you get into that place because I want you to soften the ground. I want you to soften hearts. I want you to, to pray and to, to break demonic strongholds. I want you to do that because Jesus is saying, this is where I want to go. So when the Lord says, you know, I want you to go into this classroom. Or I want you to go into this place of business. It's the Lord saying, I want to get into that business and I need somebody to get in there for me so I can move and do the things I want to do. There's people in that business I want to touch. And so I need somebody in there who's going to be my secret agent, who's going to be my person, who's going to get in there. And hopefully you're not too secret that people understand who you are and your character and your nature of who you are. But you begin to become the person that you're supposed to do. So then he says uh, in verse 2, the harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few. And I think this is what James 
Fish was feeling this morning too. The harvest is plentiful. The labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out. That first word sent was apostello, that to apostle them out. The second word is ekbalo. Lou Engels used this word. And uh, uh, they, I got a, a word um, from Sue, Howard, uh, Sue and Howard um, that Lou preached. And if you guys know Lou, he's like a guy who just kind of rattles your bones. He gets into your gut. And he was talking about the whole Alaska revival. And then he's got other, other things that the Lord's spoken to him about some things happening next April. But here, this, what the Lord says, pray to the Lord of the harvest, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his field. That word ekbalo is to expel. It's, to, it's almost like, the, like Jonah in the well. The whale came and he had to expel Jonah. There's that, there's that. It's like sometimes Jesus says, you know, I'm going to send you out into this field. I want you to get into this field. And sometimes we were, we're a little slow, like, well, you know, whatever. I'm tired or, you know, whatever. And sometimes we need to be expelled. We need to be thrust out. We need to be compelled. So there, we say they'll pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would expel me, that he would thrust me out, that he would compel me to go into my harvest field. I feel this, it's on the church right now. I can, I can feel it right now. The Lord wants to thrust us out into some harvest fields. He wants to expel us. He wants to, to plunge us into those harvest fields. So you have to say, okay, Lord, what, who, you know, what, what field are you calling me into? Who are you connecting me with? And Lord, expel me, thrust me out into those fields. Because there's God is, I mean, honestly, 1,900 people are saved in a three-week time. It's really, it's not, it's just people saying, Lord, I'm willing to go. I, I think even though with those little connect cards that we passed out a couple weeks ago, we still have some more of those. I mean, it just can be some very simple things, and we'll talk about some more here. What we can do, how we can do that, how we can, can thrust out into the harvest. So he's saying, I want you to thrust yourself out of the, as labors into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I'm saying, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing, but it is kind of funny. Behold, I'm sending you, and that word there is the apostolo again. I'm sending you out as lambs into the midst of the wolves. He's saying, you know what? <laughs> hey, I know it's going to be a little scary out there. I know it's going to be a little dangerous. I know that, yeah, it's, you know, and that's why it's so important to hear from the Lord where your field is and why it's so important to be connected to your brothers and sisters, to be part of a team, to be part of people together who's going that. So because the Lord says, listen, I'm sending you out as lambs. You know, lambs are pretty helpless. They're pretty defenseless, you know. I mean, a wolf going to devour a lamb in two seconds. I mean, it's going to just devour the thing. And so I'm sending you out as lambs into the midst of wolves. So we said, I want you to get out there where it's scary. I want you to get out there where you may not feel really comfortable. I'm thrusting you into places that are going to really stretch you. And we have to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to do that. I'm not just going to hide in these four walls. I'm not going to hide in my home. I'm not just going to hide in my little whatever routine that I have. I'm willing to be thrust out into the harvest field. I'm willing to, to go into places that may be scary for me, but knowing I've heard your voice, knowing I've heard from you, knowing that I have my brothers and sisters there with me, people who are there connected with me, praying for me, doing that. But God, I'm willing to go out into some places that, were, that may be a little stretching. I'm sure there's some people on that. <laughs> I'll let them tell them next week. I know there's things that happened in the Africa team. They were extremely stretched. They had, they had thousands of children who are pressing in on you. And it was a little overwhelming, right? No, well, a little, little, little overwhelming. That's awesome. She was stretched. She was, you know, she wasn't in the midst of wolves. She was in the midst of hungry ki children who wanted, who wanted to touch and wanted to feel and wanted to, to, to hear what these people had to say, to, to connect to them. But again, we, we have to say, Lord, I'm willing to be thrust out into the harvest field. I'm willing, God, to go. God, I'm willing, Lord, to be, be just thrust, just expelled, driven out, compelled to go, God. God, I'm willing. We have to allow the Lord to shake us in our core of our being, to give us the burden of the Lord. Say, God, you've called us. Hi, Annie. It's a really good friend of mine from high school and Annie Apperson and with her son Brad and Steve's not here today, though. All right. Sorry. She, Annie's very famous. Annie's mom was the first female mayor of Spokane. So it's her, one of her many claims to fame. But so she's an awesome woman of God. And so anyway, uh, 
I just love when I just get to see people on it. It's like I didn't know we were there. It's just it's like one of those surprises that's really fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, so I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals to greet no one on the road. Like, it's just like you're on point. You're on focus. You're not, you know, thinking about too much, oh, geez, you know, my own security or what I need to have or whatever. You're just going. You're going that. Then he says, whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. If a son of peace or a man of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. If not, it will return to you. And remain in that same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the labor deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. A whole bunch of different principles in there. But basically, the Lord said, I want you to go out. And then he says in the next verse, uh, when you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. I'm sending you out. And so then I want you to go to places where you're going you're gonna to go to some places and some places aren't going to receive you. But some places you're going to, sometimes you're going to go and people are going to receive you. So you've heard from the Lord. You've connected to people. You're, you, you, you're, you have filled this burden. You've been thrust out into the harvest field and you're going out. And what are you doing? You're looking for people who are going to receive you. You're looking for people who connect to you. You're looking for somebody, because some people aren't going to connect with you, but you're looking for those people who maybe be just in the grocery store, the checkout line, and they can be in, you know, a hundred different places. You're looking for somebody who wants to receive you. It may just be a hello, and, you know, it was uh, N N Nicole's, the, the little boy. I mean, obviously, you know, they're just, you know, let me give you my stickers. I mean, somebody, obviously, just immediately, there's a connection there. So when that connection happens... That should be your clue that the Lord is connecting you to somebody for harvest purposes. He's connecting you to somebody for kingdom purposes. It's not like, well, I'm just going to have a good day and meet somebody new today. No, he's connecting you. He's, that person's receiving. There's a connection between you and that other person. And he's doing it for kingdom purposes. The Lord is reaching. The Lord is working in that person. And he's saying, well, I know you're a believer and so he's working in that person's heart and he's connecting that person's heart to you because there's things in you that he wants to give to that person. So you have to understand the kingdom ramifications, the kingdom purpose in the people that you're receiving in. I'll leave it for the Africa team. They had incredible places where they were received into to very high levels of government last, last week or two. They're, those receptions are for kingdom purposes. So you have to be conscious. You have to be awake. Don't be clueless. You have to have a clue like, okay, God, this is what, there's something you want to do here. And then you have to hear from the Lord. God, what, what is it that you want to do? What kingdom business do you want me to do here? Then he says, heal the sick in it and say to them, it's, it's interesting to me. He doesn't say, people hear this a lot. He doesn't say pray for the sick. He says, heal the sick. And a little bit later here, we'll find out how we do that. But he says, heal the sick in it to it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. So he's saying, find that point of need. And I think at this point, he's talking about physical needs, their sickness. But it could be emotional sickness. It could be torment they went through. It could be trauma. It could be so many different areas of life. Heal the sick. He's just commanding us. So when you're making these connections, what are you looking to do? You're looking to heal the sick. Amen. So when that person connects you, maybe they see, man, this guy, this person has, there's love in his heart. There's peace in his heart. There's something this person has. And they're, they're, they're drawn to you for some reason. They maybe not, don't even know it. You need to understand, I'm being connected to this person to heal them. To bring the kingdom healing, love, life, purpose, all those things. I'm connecting to that person because I have something to give them. Each one of you, there's people out there that every one of you have something to give. People who are hurting, people who are sick. Right, Katrina? Amen. Come on. Heal the sick. So heal them. Then say the kingdom of God has come to you. So what happens? First you heal them. First you do something for them. Then you say the kingdom has come. What we want to say is, well, repent. The kingdom has come. And then I'll heal you. You know, when you get right, then I'll, then it says, no, just heal them, love them, touch them, embrace them, enfold them, Amen. touch them, bring them into a place of healing. Then when they're feeling your healing, then when they're feeling your love, then when they're feeling you moving out, say, and they're saying, man, I'm just, I, I haven't felt this before. This is incredible. I just feel so powerful. Well, the, it's the kingdom. Yes. It, it's the kingdom of God has come to you. God has just come to you. And so you heal them, and then the kingdom comes. And so you, you come, and you're, you have this, you're out there, and you're being thrust out, maybe into some scary places. You're embracing people you didn't think you, you, didn't think you could embrace before. And they're, they're receiving your love. They're receiving your life. 
and then the kingdom is coming into them. The kingdom of God has come. It says that whenever you enter a town or do, they do, and they do not receive you, go into a street and say, even the dust of your town that clings to your feet. We wipe against, hey, guess what? You're going to reach out to some people and they're not going to receive you. Just move on. Don't make, you know, don't, whatever. Don't make it a big two-month crying session. Just, just, you know, just move on to the next person. There's lots of people out there, lots of people who need love. Just go on, you know, say, okay, Lord, that wasn't, maybe it wasn't their time. You know, maybe six months later, that person will be totally open and, and ready to do it. It wasn't their time. It wasn't, it just wasn't your, maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it's somebody else that's going to come into their life and that they're the person that's going to connect to them. Don't worry about it. Just keep moving. Keep looking for that next person. Do that. And then he goes on to the, the, these next few verses about the different towns that did not receive them and how that it will be more intolerable for them in the day of judgment. So there is judgment. There is a day of judgment. There is people, whether how they respond or don't respond, ultimately they're going to be held accountable for that. They're going to respond in the day of judgment. It's very clear in the scripture. So then he says, um, verse 16, I'll read that. The one who hears you hears me. The one who rejects you rejects me. The one who rejects me rejects him who sent me, who again, who apostled me. So if, you know, if they hear you, then they're hearing, they're, they're, they're hearing the, the Jesus through you. If they're rejecting you, they're rejecting the Lord. Verse 17, the, the 70 return with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. What did Jesus say to do when, he went, when they sent him out? He said, I want you to go out and I want you to heal the sick. What happened when they came back? He said, Lord, they were rejoicing. They're like, wow, this is cool. He said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. It's like all of a sudden they stepped into power. They stepped, stepped into their authority that the Lord had given them. And they're thinking, I mean, can you imagine their whole life for 20 years? And, mo you know, our, most of our experiences too. For, really, for, for them, for 20 some years, these young, young guys, people get sick, people die. And they have no thought, no expectation that I can do anything about it. That I can change the situation. All of a sudden Jesus says, I'm giving you authority and I'm sending you out. I want you to heal the sick. So they get out there and they, you know, get the first sick person and something in them begins to command demons to go. In the name of Jesus, I command this, you know, spirit of infirmity, you get out of this body right now. In the name of Jesus, they begin to command that. And all of a sudden it works. Like, wow, this person just got better. I mean, it, it happened, it, you know, it actually works. And so they're understanding the connection between healing the sick and casting out demons that they have authority over demonic spirits and casting out demons. I want us to understand that. I don't believe that every accident that happens is because of a demon. But I think that there's can be, uh, Telena's minister last week that she, she, she opened up to us last week about chronic illnesses. I do believe that we can have a chronic illness or we can have a chronic condition that over time, a, a, uh, spirits of darkness can attach themselves to that. So you have, you're, you're battling something for a long, long time physically. And what, what happens? What, what, what wants to set into you? Hopelessness, despair, uh, a lack of faith, you know, whatever. What are those? Those are demonic spirits that are coming to oppress you. And so we have to break those things. I break hopelessness in Jesus' name. I break despair in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. Our God is a good God. He's going to heal you. He's going to deliver you. So they're, they're in every situation, I say every situation, most every situation, you're dealing with the demonic realm. And you have to have the wisdom to know how to approach that, how to go about that. I think you, you can... You can be very direct at certain times. Other drinks says, Lord, I just release your healing anointing. I release your power right now. You know in your spirit that you're addressing a demonic spirit of, of sickness in that person. You know, you may not feel, not feel like, you know, I, I rebuke that, whatever. You can do it or you don't do it. You just, you follow the Holy Spirit at that point. But in yourself, you know, I have authority over demonic spirits. You all have authority over demonic spirits. You have to understand, I said, they, they came back. In fact, these disciples came back. The cross hadn't happened yet. They didn't have the blood of Jesus. They didn't have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they still, the, de the demon spirits were still subject to them. They still had to obey the voice of the disciples when they were ministering to people. Here we are on the other side of the cross, on the other side of Pentecost. We have the blood of the Lamb. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the word of the Lord. And we have authority over demonic spirits. How is the kingdom going to expand? 
It's going to be because we go out and begin to take dominion over demonic spirits. We begin to take dominion over the authorities of hell. We begin to recognize that I have authority here. Demon, you don't have authority. I have the, I'm the one with the authority. And you begin to release that into the harvest field that you're called to walk in, into the people that God connects you to. You begin to release the authority of Christ that you called, you're walked in. They said, we have, they're going to go, wow, we have authority over demon spirits. You all have authority over demonic spirits. Every one of you, if you know Christ, if you've been washed in his blood, you have authority to do damage to darkness. You can wreck hell. You can go out of this church right now and you can do damage to the kingdom of darkness here in Spokane. You have power. You have authority. You have dominion. You can begin to break the lies over people's lives, over their mind. You can begin to declare truth over them. You can walk into your business. Don't be a weirdo. But walk into your business place and begin to take dominion over that territory. That's your place of employment. That's where you work. So you just say, the kingdom of God is here. Because I'm here, the kingdom's here. Because I'm here, then that means I've got, I'm the one, you know, yeah, you have your boss and you be respectful and you do what you're told to do. But spiritually, you have a place of authority and dominion. You can begin to shift the atmosphere. You can begin to break apart works of hell, of darkness in your sphere of influence. Maybe it's in your home with your children, whatever. You need to take, oh man, I'm getting that. <laughs> you, you're not called to be your child's best friend. You're called to be their mom or dad. You're called to be in authority. So you may want a buddy, and you can be close to them. You can be, I love my children. I want to be close to them. But I'm not, their, I'm not called to be their buddy. I'm called to be their dad. You're called to be their dad and their mom. And so when they're screwing off and they're doing something that's not right, you need to take authority and say, no, we're not doing that in our house. No, we're not talking like that. You don't need to yell at them, but you need to use a voice of authority. You know, you don't, you just say, hey, no, we're not doing that. We're not going to, we're not going to talk like that to each other. We're not going to do that. You are the authority. You're setting the kingdom parameters. What's allowed, what's not allowed. That's your job, mom and dad. All right? Okay. Bless the Lord. You can do that. Again, it's different with your child, your, your children, their little children. And as they get older, it, 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 the, you, how you do it and all, all the dynamics changes. But it, it's, you're still, you're still in that place of authority. But what I my point is the disciples came back and they said the demons are subject to us. We have to get to the revelation where that we know that demonic realm, I don't care if it's Satan or whatever, you know, principality makes you tremble. You have the authority. The greater is he that's in you than he that's in the, in the world. We, church, have the authority to do damage to darkness. We have authority to extend God's kingdom here in Spokane. We, you know, where, who else is going to come? I know there's lots of great churches, other people, believers in town. But it's going to come from the believing community. We have authority in America. The, 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 we are the ones that are called to take dominion over authority. The homosexual agenda does not have authority. I have authority over that demonic agenda in Jesus' name. I have authority over the Muslim agenda in Jesus' name. It's a false agenda. It's a false God. Only through Jesus Christ can you come through to God. He is the way. He is the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. So I break that right now, that authority that says, that voice that says, well, somehow the Muslims have a voice to rule our country. No, I break that in Jesus' name. Sharia law will not be the law of the land. The Constitution, what God has brought to us, will be our law. You begin to take authority. We're not just going to back down, crawl away, Go crawl in a corner somewhere. We're going to rise up with the voice that God's given you and begin to exercise it. Begin to speak it. Begin to declare it. The homosexuals are not going to dictate the environment of our schools. They're not going to teach my children. They're, you just got to begin to just take, draw a line somewhere and say, no, this, these, these children are my inheritance. You're not going to begin to give them warped perceptions of a no, it's male and female. You know, I've hit this several weeks and probably in a row. And I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep hitting because there's, we're inundated with these other voices. So I'm, I'm just going to, I, I, I'm not angry with anybody. I'm not, I don't feel hateful to anybody. But I'm going to declare the truth of God. God created us male and female. Male and female go together. Male and male don't. Female and female don't. It's just the way it is. So that's the way God's created us. So we begin, begin to see the demons, demonic powers are subject to me. 
You have to understand that you, that you are, they're a subject to you. That has to be a revelation that you carry. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Um, then he said to them, I saw, what was Jesus', Jesus response? I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. What happens? We all go out individually. We begin to tread upon the serpents and scorpions. We begin to release the power of heaven. We begin to take dominion over darkness. And what happens? As we're all individually into that place that the Lord's thrust us into and we're extending the kingdom of God, what does Jesus say? I saw Satan fall like lightning in the heavens. Over the region, Jesus I just saw the devil coming down. As we are all thrust out into our harvest fields, taking dominion, declaring the kingdom of God, declaring the truth of God, there's a, a power that's broken over our whole region. And then, yeah, 1,900 people could be saved in Spokane in a few weeks' time. And it really is not that difficult. It's really not. We have the authority. We have the power. We have the God who can do it. So he sees there's this, this d tremendous power over that. Then he says, Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. You know, this is a, this is a, a violent, this is a, it's not a passive, wimpy, whatever, this, you know, and I'm not, I don't know, I'm not saying, you know, be macho guy, whatever. I'm just saying that there's just something I said, I can tread on serpents and scorpions. I can trample on them. I can, I can do damage to darkness. I can come against spirits of hell, and I can set the captive free. I can release the power of Christ. I can do that. You begin to, to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. So Jesus says, you know, you can, over all the power, all of Satan's power, you have authority to tread, to, to trample upon them. Then he says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That word, that, that word there is to, that uh, are written, it means to be inscribed. It means to, to be engraved in heaven. So what happens? You just say, you know, yes, you're excited about the demons are subject to you, but rejoice, nevertheless, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Each of our names are inscribed in heaven right now. What does that do? Is that you have, you have a place in heaven that's recognized. So when you're out there doing kingdom business and you're pulling on healing, you're pulling on the peace of God, you're pulling on salvation, it's not like you don't have access. It's like, like you know, it's, you know, you're, you're, you know, Deborah goes out and she's, you know, she's, she's accessing heaven, and then they look at, oh yeah, there's Deborah's name right there. She's authorized to do kingdom business, and so she can go and she can access what she needs in heaven. If you are part of an exclusive club, and you can only, you only the members were allowed. You're part of the most exclusive club and that, that's available to you. You're in the club of heaven. You're, you know, you may go want to go into Club Med, but it doesn't compare to, to Club Heaven. You can go into heaven because your name is inscribed in heaven. Your name is written in heaven, and you have access to get into heaven and to get the stuff that you need to bring down to earth and to release it to people, to release the kingdom of heaven here on earth. You have that power to do that, to release the kingdom of heaven. Oh, man. Uh, there's a... So we're establishing the kingdom of God by driving demonic realm out of a territory. Really, it was, it was what we're doing. We're establishing the kingdom of God by taking our authority and releasing that over the, over our, the territory God's given us to, to walk in. Proverbs 2, Proverbs 2, verse 21 and 22. The upright will inhabit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. The upright will inhabit the land. Those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. I could probably give you a hundred scriptures that is basically saying the same thing. The righteous are called to inherit the land and those with integrity will remain in it. The wicked will be cut off. Proverbs 24, 16. A righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumbles in times of calamity. The righteous man falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. You know what? There's all those times when I've, I've fallen. When, I'm not talking morally fallen. When I've, when you, you, you just, you're, you're, you get going and you're doing kingdom work and you maybe you hit a brick wall and you just like go, wow. You know, that was, you know, I'm just, you're kind of reeling because you, you just come, came against some stronghold of darkness. 
It says, you know what? The righteous man can fall seven times, but he gets up again. So you have to have that spirit. It's, it's, it's the rocky spirit. That's why we love dun, 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 you know. And everything in us just starts getting charged up. Like we all like, uh, dun, 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 and you just want, you just, you're ready to go do some damage. Why? Because that's the way God created us. We love it when you're, yeah, you're knocked down. You're like, you're in the 10 count. You're just, you know, you're over there and you just all of a sudden, you know, you, you get up and you feel kind of bloody and disoriented, whatever, but you get back up. The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. We need to get up, church. Whatever you've experienced that's caused you to fall, you need to get up this morning. Get up. Get up. <laughs> One of Carrie's, my daughter Carrie's favorite movie was Bambi. And, uh, and uh, Bambi's mom gets, you know, we don't, no, Bambi's mom gets shot, you know. Dad comes along. Get up, Bambi. Get up. And uh, get up, Bambi. You know, basically, you know, Bambi's there with his mom and, you know, whatever. And it's kind of a not a real hunter movie, but, you know, a few hunter. But anyway, you need to get up. You need to get up. You need to hear the Lord saying to you this morning, whatever's made you fall, maybe you've blown it. Maybe you made a bad mistake, whatever. Repent. Get forgiveness. Get clean with the Lord. Talk to somebody, whatever like that. Maybe somebody's rejected you. Somebody's hurt you, whatever. You need, you've fallen. You're a righteous person. You need to get up. You need to stand this morning. You need to stand. Your church needs you. Your city needs you. Your nation needs you. We need to stand, church. Whatever has come against you, whatever's caused you to stumble, what's ever caused you to fall, there's forgiveness, there's mercy, there's the blood of Christ, there's compassion. But, but eventually you need to stand. Whatever you found yourself bound in or, or, or captured by, you can get set free this morning and you can, get, you can stand up. You need to stand. I, just, I feel like, church, we need to stand. We need to get the stand in us. We can't just stop lying down, stop rolling over, stop whatever. We need to find our voice and we need to stand up and begin to speak what God's given us to speak out, out of a heart of love, compassion, but truth has to come out of our lips. We, got to, we have to speak truth. I'll read this one thing here. Um, this lady that came to the healing rooms years ago, her name was Kat Kerr. Honestly, she was, she was, she's, she's out there. I'll just put it that way. And uh, she gets a lot of into heaven and heavenly visitation. So I heard her speak down there, and it was good. Um, but uh, uh, Becky posted something a couple weeks ago that she, she wrote, and I liked it. And so I kind of cl clicked on a Facebook, and then I, I liked her, whatever. She's a public figure, liked her site, and so I got this thing. Um, but I like what she says, because I think there's tremendous truth in it. It says, God bless America. The father woke me up yesterday and began to explain to me why he will not curse or pour out his wrath on America and why he's asking his children to begin to proclaim, God bless America. Help us to speak your words of life and not death. Show us your goodness, and that for you are far above, above all others. He said that America is not what our enemies call it, not what the current White House leadership calls it, not even what some of his confused children call it. America is what he calls it. Can we say amen to that? America is what God calls it. It's not what anybody else calls it. It's not what I want to call it. It's what God calls it. That's really the identity of America. Um, uh, America is a Christian nation. We need to understand this church. America is a Christian nation. It's a battle line that's been drawn. They're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to declare something else over us. And we need to, we have authority over demonic spirits, whether it's in an individual thing, de demonic attack, whether it's over our, our, a family or a region or our city, whatever, or over our nation. We have authority and we need to declare America is a Christian nation and was created and established for, by him to be a base on earth for the righteous those who are followers of Christ, to freely preach the gospel of the kingdom while loving one another, taking authority over all the powers of darkness, shine his light, make disciples of all nations, bring hope, lift oppression from around the world, and live a supernatural life in this natural world. He calls America one of his battle stations on earth where he could open heavenly portals to be used by his angelic armies and is a friend to Israel. It is even hidden in the name Jerusalem. So in the name of Jerusalem is USA right in the very heart of the name of Jerusalem. It is written in the founding documents. I, I like that. 
It is written in the founding documents of our nation. It is proclaimed in the song of our nation. Written on the money of our nation. And it has been declared by millions, past and present, who call this nation their home. God bless America. God bless America. Father told me that he is going to heal our land. Millions of his people have prayed that prayer. He will not ignore those prayers. Once again, establish America as a leading power in the earth. He will make it greater than it was before. Christ brings abundant life, not doom and gloom, fear, oppression, or bondage. So stop asking God to curse America. It is not heavenly culture to curse. Start. <laughs> That's good right there. We don't curse in our home either. Not our culture. We don't curse in our home. Well, you can do what you want in your home, but it's not heavenly culture to curse. So figure that one out. Start blessing America, your family, your friends, the creatures, the earth itself, even your enemies. Those who curse you, it is in the word to, to bless those. Bless your enemies. When you begin to speak blessings, you are speaking for God. It's time for the body of Christ worldwide to start blessing one another. Stop fighting each other. We are not enemies. We are family. Torment the demons by taking authority over all their power. Loosing the army of heaven on them, but stop tormenting each other. <laughs> this is great. Especially your pastor. How would you like... <laughs> <laughs> How would you like it if God put you in his place? <laughs> That's pretty funny. I don't know if you like the humor of it, but I think it's funny. <laughs> P.S. God said every time you ask him to judge, curse, or punish this nation, you are asking him to do that to your own family who live in this nation. Selah. God bless America. We thank you for the sending your army to work with us in this kingdom of age of glory. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. America has stumbled but she will stand again. The church has stumbled, but she will rise again. The righteous will inherit the land. Church, yes, America has stumbled. We've stumbled in a lot of ways. We've stumbled from the, the beginning, the way we treated the Native American people. We stumbled, obviously, with, horribly with, with, with African Americans, the issues of slavery. We have stumbled. But it doesn't mean that we cannot rise and be a righteous nation. That we can do what's right. That we can right every wrong. That we can do repentance and, and rest or, uh, recompense those that we, we've done wrong to. But we've stumbled. We've fallen. But we can rise again. But it's up to us, church. It's our battle. It's what we've been called to do. We've been called to speak truth. We've been called to speak righteousness. To, to extend mercy over people who are caught and bound in sin. To break the lie of the hell and darkness. To, to release them over that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Then it says here, I'll just read this last one. In that, hour, that same hour, he rejoiced, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. He was calling his disciples little children. Um, yes, Father, for the such was your gracious will. That word to rejoice there, it means to uh, be exceedingly glad. It means to uh, be exhilarating, electrifying joy. Jesus, when he saw his disciples walking in their authority, dominion over, over the, the powers of hell, it was like electrifying joy in him. He'd go, wow, whoo, whoo, oh, look at my church. Whoa, man, look at that person. They're casting out devils. Satan's being cast out. I mean, he, this electrifying joy was flowing through him. So when you're out there and you put your hands on somebody and you minister to them, oh, man, did you see Sarah out there? She's out there missing that person. Electrifying joy is going through Jesus. I mean, my kingdom's going. They believe me. They're doing what I asked them to do. They're extending my kingdom. They're releasing my work. Jesus' response is electrifying joy. He's like, he's like whoa, man. It's like you just got hooked up to, to this incredible joy. You just electri electrified, electrocuted with joy. That's what the Lord's doing. I want us to stand up. And I would like you to go and just and, uh, lay, put your hand on the person next to you. So get it closer if you need to. And I, I want to, we're going to have a little practicum here. A little practical session. We are taking authority right now. I've mentioned if I ask you who has some kind of physical infirmity in their body, I'm guessing 99% of the people would probably raise their hand. So we're just all going to lay hands on each other. And I want you to take authority. I want you to use a voice of authority. And I know I'm not yelling at the devil. But we're, we're not going to be wimps either. And we're going to command healing to flow in our bodies. We're going to command every demonic spirit of infirmity to go now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord, we speak healing 
in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. We command healing to flow into our brothers and sisters right now. We break the power of hell right now. Every demonic spirit of infirmity, you go in the name of Jesus. You go. This is a blood brought brother or sister of Christ. We command you to go. We loose the authority in the kingdom of heaven right now in Jesus' name. We command healing to flow in Jesus' name into, the, into every knee, God, into the, every feet, God, every, boy, every bone, every joint, God. Lord, we loose it right now. God, into every digestive system. Lord, we loose the healing of heaven, God. We command healing to flow now in the name of Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you. Demons of sickness, we command you to go with the authority of Christ. We have authority over you, and we exercise it right now in the name of Jesus. We exercise Go ahead and pray for your brothers and sisters. Loose healing right now. Loose the kingdom. Command sickness to go. Loose it now in the name of Jesus. We break sickness over this house. We break it now in Jesus' name. I break the spirit of infirmity right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in the authority of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you, God. We exalt you, Jesus, for the miracles you're doing right now. Lord, I thank you for your miracle power that's flowing right now in this house, God. Lord, you're flowing from brother to sister, sister to brother, God. Brother to brother, sister to sister, God. Lord, you're flowing right now. Miracle power, Lord, is flowing right now in Jesus' name. Miracle power, Lord, is flowing. God, I break every chain, God. Every spirit of hopelessness, God. Lord, I go back to Telena's word from last week. I break chronic sickness, God, in Jesus' name. I break it now in Jesus' name. We command it to be broken. You cannot have a place in the body of Christ. We command you to be broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stomach ulcers, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Shoulder pain, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the ears open in the name of Jesus. Every deafness open now. Lack of hearing open now in the name of Jesus. Open now. We command the opening of ears in the name of Jesus. Eyes be healed. Be strengthened. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every joint pain now. Freedom, liberty now. Freedom, liberty. We speak to backs. We command to be healed in the name of Jesus. We break the power of cancer, every disease. We break its power now in the name of Jesus. We lose healing in this house, God. Every infirmity, every disease, we command you to go in the name of Jesus. Healing of Christ flow. Healing of Christ flow in your body, God. Flow in the body of Christ now. Every vein, any artery, God. Lord, we command them to flow in the name of Jesus. Hearts open up in the name of Jesus. We command it, Lord, a healing of the hearts now in Jesus' name. Every artery, every vein open in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Miracle power. Miracle power. You said you sent us out, Lord, to do the work of the kingdom, God. Lord, we loose it now, Lord, in this house, and we loose it out there, God. We release it, God, the miracle power of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody have a feel anything that hit, hit them? Testimony? Any feel like you, you, were, you were not feeling good and you're feeling better now? The atmosphere is good in this place right now. Any oppression to the left? Go ahead, Jonathan, come on up. Anybody else? Well, earlier, I was having a headache and I wasn't feeling really good. And after worship, it was mostly gone. I was just hungry because I couldn't really eat this morning. <laughs> and my mom and dad prayed for me just now, and I have no headache. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody feel like there's a small oppression left? Any heaviness, discouragement? Yeah. Lift your hands up. Don't be, don't be ashamed. Okay, got tons of people. Okay, that's awesome. That's a powerful atmosphere. That's a heavenly atmosphere that just broke demonic stuff that was trying to oppress you, put you down. Because the atmosphere feels, it is, feels great in here. 
I feel, <laughs> I feel like a party to me. A heavenly, a heavenly ghost party. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Come on, Emily. So on one... Oh, <laughs> Let it go, girl. Um, on Monday, I was stretching, and I'm a dancer, and um, I was stretching, and I didn't stretch enough, and I, I think I pulled my hamstring. Um, so I was just having a lot of pain in my like upper thigh, and um, I couldn't bend down and touch my toes, where before I could like put my whole head on the floor, pretty much. And um, so I, I just, and then also like a lot of pain in like my knees and stuff, um, and just the tendons, and um, it's completely great now, and it feels like absolutely 100% better, and that is awesome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, last chance. Anybody else? Last chance. Church, you can do the stuff. You're authorized, you're deputized, you're anointed, you're called, you're appointed, you're powerful to do what God's called you to do. You can go and do what the Lord's called you to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you need continued release in this, we're going to have uh, ministers up at the altar to continue to ekbalo you and to bring... Uh, I'm serious. If you want some fresh inspiration for where you're supposed to be doing these things, if you need clarity on that, um, there's a grace on our uh, ministry team this morning to bring prophetic release and apostolic thrust to your life. So come if you're hungry for that, if you've got a little bit more of a taste for that this morning because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word uh, through John and the, and the body here, then come forward and receive that, okay? It's a, come and receive power. Get, get, get more powerful before you leave, okay? <laughs> we love you guys. I'm so honored to be a part of this church. Um, have a wonderful week. We look forward to the testimonies pouring in throughout the week. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen.